What's up, everyone? We're here for post game locked on Bucks and Milwaukee uh, got themselves out of a little late game uh, hole here in Brooklyn. I don't know about you, Frank, but I was having flashbacks to game seven last year. It went to overtime in Brooklyn. The Bucks were able to pull it out. A uh, little bit more offense in the overtime period than in game seven of the playoffs, but the result uh, was ultimately the same. And the Bucks, uh, for the second straight time against the Sixers the other day, Brooklyn today, playoff atmosphere 100%. Uh, they were able to get the job done. Giannis created a little bit of history tonight. Chris Milton was tossed out of the game. There's plenty to discuss. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Bucks. I'm your host, Kane Pittman. You can see and hear me on the show Monday to Friday. And also find my work over at ESPN. Joining me, the founder of BrewHoop.com and longtime voice of the podcast, Frank Madden. Uh, and as always, we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen of every day. Uh, and look, when the Bucks win like this and Giannis creates a little bit of history, why wouldn't you want to listen to Locked On Bucks when you wake <laughs> up in the morning? Or look at us. Or look at two smiling faces on YouTube. So, hey, uh, credit to you guys for doing this. Uh, this is a fun week, though, Frank. We've had some games that have been a little bit ho-hum along the way. The last two games haven't been one of them. And tonight was even a step up somehow from this game in Philadelphia the other night. It did go to overtime. The Bucks win 120 to 119. Uh, Giannis, look, he just all he, all he needed was 80 points from these two road games against Eastern <laughs> Conference contenders. And he did it. And he did it with a freaking step back three to tie the effing game. Uh, he did it all. He, he, we spoke about the package he delivered against Philadelphia tonight. He hit a clutch threes. He's hitting clutch free throws. Uh, there is no better game for him to pass Kareem as a franchise scoring legend and also just display the complete evolution of Giannis as an offensive player, which, by the way, the trajectory is still going up. But this was this was incredible stuff. I mean, were you? We I think in the last podcast we did, you asked me, you know, do, do I think Giannis was going to break the record? Tonight? I was like, oh, he's not going to. He's not going to go put up another forty burger tonight. Like, come on, he's not going to do that. Um, and you know, after the high of of Tuesday's game in Philly, I mean, you knew this was another opportunity to obviously make a huge statement for Giannis in this MVP race. Uh, an opportunity for the Bucks to. It's over. Remind. Remind the <laughs> remind the basketball world, you know, that they are the NBA champions, and against a Brooklyn team that obviously uh, came into this season as as the Vegas favorite. And I don't think many people are saying that they're the favorites right now, um, but obviously a lot of chatter about them, just given their very weird position as a play-in team right now, and potentially being, you know, a major banana peel uh, for any of the top top two two seeds to potentially get. Um, but I, I mean, for Giannis to follow up what we saw on Tuesday against Embiid with, you know, arguably an even more impressive performance tonight against Kevin Durant. Um, again, I, j you just have to enjoy these games. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I think what's, what's so nice about this regular season is we know he can do this in the playoffs, in the NBA finals, you know, he's basically just doing what he's already done at the absolute highest level. Uh, and you know, I, I just tweeted about it. I, I, it's just so nice being able to enjoy this regular season without the baggage of, well, he's got to do it in the playoffs or like, oh, well, he didn't do it last year against the Raptors or against the Heat or none of that, none of that. You know, we can just enjoy regular season basketball. We can enjoy, you know, again, one of the most special talents this league has ever seen, certainly the most special player that that I've ever had a chance to to cheer for night to night. And and honestly, it's like, you know, I mean, just the stuff that he does in terms of things that you just didn't think were possible on a basketball court. I mean, it's like Giannis and LeBron in my lifetime. Like I watched Jordan in the nineties. He was obviously incredible one, you know, six NBA championships. I saw all of them, but at that point he wasn't athletically quite the guy that, that he might've been early in his career. So it's just amazing. And, and for him, as you said, to uh, tonight, you know, he, taught, he turned it over, what, five times in the fourth quarter? Obviously, he was having a monster game. But the fact that the Nets go up 108-99, Chris Middleton's ejected. It's not looking great. It's looking like the Bucks' luck has run out. The Nets 
Uh, finished at 49% from three. The Bucks were under 30. I made the comment, not going to win a lot of games when you get outshot by 30%, because at one point it was 57% to 27% in the fourth quarter. Bucks had over 20 turnovers. You know, they literally kind of gave this game away multiple times. And the fact that they were able to take a 108-99 deficit and tie the game on that Giannis three, close the game on a huge run. And then, you know, again, they made some mistakes in, in overtime. Giannis missed some free throws down the stretch. Um, they, uh, Wes Matthews, who did an incredible job on KD and at times on Kyrie, fouls KD on that three from the corner, seemingly gives the Nets obviously that chance to win it. And then Giannis steps up and hits those big, big free throws and KD misses another chance to win a game uh, like he did the last time uh, we, we saw these teams in Brooklyn. Um, yeah, that was just so much fun. And, you know, I, I, again, you couldn't really ask for much more from these past two games from Giannis. So uh, I, I don't, I, I don't know the, the, the Clippers played an overtime game tonight in Chicago and lost the Bucks play an overtime game in Brooklyn tonight. Um, I don't know if they're just going to agree to put their G League teams out tomorrow night in Milwaukee. I'm not really sure what to expect in that game, but man, um, you just got to enjoy what we saw tonight. This was, you know, as 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 fun as you're going to have watching regular season basketball. Absolutely. And by the way, I was just laughing. So I I just got off the Bucks post game stuff and Wesley Matthews. Well, first of all, and we we can get into the game a little bit later, but I just want to stick with Giannis for a little bit just because of how ridiculous it was. But Wesley Matthews, first of all, he sat down and just said, damn, I'm tired. And it's like, yeah, you probably should be. You were putting in work tonight. But he said something else that was really interesting. He said, I don't really have uh, he's like, oh, I don't have a stat sheet in front of me. Then someone, Bucks PR, probably Dan Smechek or whatever, put the stat sheet in front of him. And he looks at it and he's like, oh, 22 turnovers. Then he's like, oh, they hit 18 threes. He's like, I don't really know how we won this game. He's like, that's hard to do. <laughs> and then he sat there for a while and he goes, well, it helps when you got the big fella. And he's right. <laughs> and And look, and you were exactly right, Frank. I mean, you said this, that, you know, sometimes whether it's LeBron, these guys, like, that we've watched them and we've spoke about it, do it to the Bucks time and time again, where if you're an opposition fan, you're like, uh, well, when's it going to happen? When is this man going to rip it away from us? And this is what is so exciting. It, for me, it's almost like we're entering into a different era of watching Giannis because of the way that he's doing it now. And that, that has to be the biggest three he's hit in his career. I can't think of anything that's close to that. He's attempted some for sure. I remember he hit some in some regular season games, but on, on this stage with everyone watching national TV, I can't remember a three like this. Someone might be able to correct me. Uh, and then the free throws as well. So it's like now we've seen him win games with layups, with dunks, all that kind of stuff. And now it feels like a mid-range jumper that he dribbled into against Philadelphia two days ago. Now the, the three-point shot. And you have this weird sort of confidence about Giannis when he's at the free throw line as well. Uh, it's it's always exciting to watch Giannis, but it does just feel that we're seeing this guy start to move into the next uh, era of his career. It's just, just absolutely ridiculous. He's done pretty well to this point at 27 years old. And something that Drew Holiday said that I want to throw to you he was talking about Giannis and he said, yeah, well, I, you know, I mean, he's the MVP to me. And then he also said, he's also the most improved player. When you look at what he's doing, uh, is Giannis, can Giannis win the most improved player this year? Of course, he's not going to win it. But there's a case to be made that what we're seeing should put him in the conversation. Uh, okay, let's calm down. Let's go. Let's just let's just settle for MVP and defensive player of the year chatter. Okay, Ken, let, we don't have to take all we can leave some awards for other people. I don't. Has, there's, there surely has never been a two-time most improved player. We're after history here. <laughs> We're after history here. <laughs> That's right. And Giannis was, I think, in the like top five to seven of the most improved, like three straight years, because he just, <laughs> he just was incredibly. He just kept getting better and better and better. And uh, yeah, this was this was just amazing. And um, you know, again, that there were there were mistakes in the fourth quarter, the turnovers. Um, he missed, you know, a couple free throws in overtime. He missed a couple free throws in regu regulation. Although Wes Matthews, again, Wes Matthews of all people. First off, Giannis has to have the highest offensive rebound rate, like his team offensive rebounding when he misses free throws of like any player in the league. I feel like it's just crazy how many times either Giannis or a teammate ends up getting the rebound. And early in the season, it was like, well, it's because he was missing a lot. Obviously, now he's generally gotten very consistent. Um, up above 75% again tonight so at 15 of 19. But um, but yeah, just a, a game that 
you know, I, close games like this, you know, historically, it's very hard to just consistently win these kind of clutch games, these really close games night in and night out. Um, you know, we always talk about Phoenix as kind of sort of an example of a team that can actually win um, these sort of toss up games because they have those two guards. They've been awesome in clutch time. But we've also been talking about the Bucks being so good. Really, ever since those back to back losses before the break against the Sixers and after a break against the KD less Nets when Kyrie had 38. Um, ever since then, they've just been so good in crunch time. And it just, you know, it just feels like a different energy around them. And again, feels kind of like what we saw in the NBA finals against those Phoenix Suns and the Bucks. You know, three games went down to the wire and they just always made the plays on both ends to win games. And obviously right now they're just in an incredible run of form and clutch time generally. Um, but then also, you know, just in these last second plays, just whether it's now Giannis hitting step back threes um, or defensively making plays, um, you know, it's it's just been such a fun thing to watch. And, and again, like, yeah, I mean, I would have rather, you know, uh, in, in terms of, you know, what's a better sign for the Bucs? Yeah, I'd rather see them win by 20 tonight and not have to play, you know, guys big major minutes. But I also think there is value. We've talked about this. I think there's value in sort of, getting reps with, you know, this is mostly the same group as last year, but some guys are new. You're having to do things differently than you did in the playoffs last year with no PJ having that Brooke, obviously until recently, I think it, I think there is value. There's, you know, that muscle memory of like, Hey, we were down 13 in the fourth quarter in Philly. We can come back. We're down nine with what, three minutes to go in this game. We can come back. They did this against Miami. We've seen them do it repeatedly this season there's no quit in this team and their ability to dig down, especially defensively in fourth quarters has been really impressive. And I mean, I just, you know, I just generally thought the work they did tonight, I mean, it was really the the Nets other guys that really hurt them, but I thought the game plan and the execution against KD and Kyrie was, was really impressive tonight. The way that they swarmed selectively um, the individual defense that guys like Wes drew, you know, Giannis, took KD for periods of, of overtime. Um, they put different guys in those spots and I was just really impressed with how they executed. And again, a lot of threes that they gave up, but I mean, look at the people hitting them, right? Like Bruce Brown, Kessler Edwards, you know, you kind of have to live with those guys hitting threes. Um, but I thought the kind of just the work they did against the Nets two stars was just really impressive. And, you know, especially uh, Kyrie, I mean, what, did Kyrie score two points in the fourth quarter in overtime or like from, from when Drew Holiday came in, I think with eight minutes left, there was not a peep from Kyrie, right? I mean, he didn't even touch the ball very much. And some of that was obviously just Drew being incredible. Some of that was just the way that they were able to bring extra bodies, cheat over, but then, you know, do it in ways that they were able to get back. I, I think the scrambling defense, um, they've gotten a lot of good reps, let's say, these past couple of games against Embiid and to a lesser extent Harden on Tuesday and now tonight against two very different players in Kyrie and Kevin Durant. So, um, you know, again, as far as tune-ups for the playoffs go, I think this has been a really, really instructive week. And the fact that you come away with two exciting, heart-pounding wins where Giannis just goes crazy and, you know, furthers his MVP campaign. I mean, again, as a fan, it's it's hard to ask for a lot more from, from a regular season couple of games. Uh, you can check out the MVP odds over at betonline.net, uh, our friends here at Locked On Bucks. Uh, but college basketball we're talking about at the moment. After months of playing, college basketball has determined the top teams for the Final Four, and they will determine this year's national champion in the coming week. Betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info from the latest odds, contests, and player props. Uh, you name it. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your latest sports developments, including podcasts and reviews, for all the leagues this season. And it's not just basketball. Uh, baseball is starting to fire up here as well. Vegas casino games, live betting on all the sports you want. So check it out at betonline.net on the website or on your mobile device. That's BetOnline where the game starts. Uh, also check out the Locked On Now podcast after you're done with Locked On Bucks. You can hear from our friends over at Locked On Nets, see how they uh, review this game because it, it, there is implications for the Nets with the seven seed, the eight seed, the nine seed. I know they haven't got tiebreakers there, so uh, there's some interesting stuff going on with the Nets. Obviously, everyone's going to be uh, keeping an eye on on where they finish. So check out the Locked On 
now podcast. Uh, just as far as the defensive stuff goes, and you mentioned it a little bit, one other play, obviously, we should mention, was Giannis with the double team at the end of regulation, just out of nowhere on, on Kevin Durant. And, but Wesley Matthews, I already mentioned him, but this has been a massive sign of faith from Bud over the last couple of days. And, and look, I don't think that there was any doubt that Bud <laughs> trusts Wesley Matthews, very familiar defender. Some people will sit there and say, well, why wasn't he playing on Jimmy Butler in the bubble? But anyway, we won't go back in the past too far. Uh, we'll keep it in the present. And, and look, I've said, and you can see it in the YouTube comments, you see it on Twitter, there is this kind of hesitance to get on board with Wesley Matthews. But the one thing that he's proven this year is that he is still so damn versatile. And look, can you rely on Wesley Matthews to go out there and stop Kevin Durant? Well, no. I mean, but who actually can? And Kyrie Irving is going to burn him sometimes. There's no doubt about that. But if there's one thing we learned last year, the value of having a physical defender on a guy like Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving, depending on which way you go, uh, you can get some value eventually by wearing down the guy. And I think Wesley Matthews, what we've seen on some plays on Kyrie Irving tonight, some plays on Kevin Durant, a couple of little strips there, at least forcing him into difficult shots. He's done a really, really good job. And, and I just think that when people straight away are like, well, why don't you go to Giannis? We saw tonight what's going to happen if you need to in the overtime or the fourth quarter in a close game. Sure, put Giannis on him. But the value of having another guy that you can put on these players, these stars, for the first three quarters of a game or early in a game and save Giannis some of those legs, save Drew Holiday, these guys, if you can, I just think it's so valuable. And we've wondered all season long, well, what's going to happen if Grayson Allen's in the starting lineup? Is Pat Connaughton going to be the guy? Who are the Bucks going to put out there? Looks like Wesley Matthews is at least going to be the guy they're going to be put to put in a position to do so. He played major minutes tonight. He obviously had an important role the other night. I don't know whether he can do it for an entire playoff series. That's still the question that needs to be answered. Uh, but I don't think you can fault him with the early marks. Yeah, I mean the good news is he's younger than PJ Tucker, so so hopefully he can match PJ's durability in terms of uh, a postseason. PJ might run. have another decade in him. I mean, he, went, yeah. he doesn't look like he's close to retiring. Yeah, it's it's wild. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just I, I've just been so happy. I mean, for him. I mean, you know, when I watch these games, obviously, I mean, Giannis is the 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 star of the show. He's the, obviously the person that most of us you know root for the most. He's the superstar, but. Um, as far as like the role players on this team, I mean, for me, Wes Matthews is such a great story. There was actually um, Scott Cacciola in the New York Times wrote a story about Wes actually today, providing a little bit of backstory on, you know, his his season and also his off season and, you know, kind of waiting and, and keeping in touch with the Bucks and kind of yeah. wanting to be here. I but then that. obviously uh, it took a little while, um, but, you know, and, and again, I I think it's important to be. I think you got to be a little wait and see before you declare him, you know, he's that he's filled the PJ Tucker yeah. spot and that, you know, bucks are set and blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, I, I don't want to be too presumptuous. Um, we've seen that three point shooting come and go. Um, and of late, we've obviously seen it come back a bit. And tonight, I mean, if someone had told you before the game that Wes Matthews would score only 15 fewer points on 12 fewer shots than Kevin Durant, you'd feel pretty good about the Bucks winning a basketball game. Um, you know, he ends up with 11 points on, on nine shots. Uh, one of the, I think one of those threes came in overtime, right? Yeah. He hit that three. I think when, uh, after um, maybe KD had hit a three or I think the nets were, had taken the lead. Um, so for him to give you, you know, 11 points in 36 minutes, he only had two fouls, <laughs> you know, I think in the last time these teams played, I don't think he had any fouls. Um, he's obviously had some games where he had kind of a little bit more foul trouble and tonight, obviously, everyone will remember, you know, a pretty, uh, um, uh, let's just say not the finest closeout on KD's attempted uh, corner three. That Wild challenge from Bud, by the way. I mean, I, yeah. I get it. I get it. But it was never getting overturned. Yeah. yeah. I was, um, I have to say, I was, I immediately thought like, oh, that's going to be a flagrant um, right. based on the landing sort of idea. But, you know, I, it's like when you watch it, like really the foul was the, the like basically like knee to knee or leg to knee on yeah. KD, which, you know, made it more dangerous, you can argue. Um, it wasn't like a typical put your foot under a guy's foot type of foul. Um, so, hey, you know, 
I mean, obviously, if they rule that a flagrant three point foul, it's curtains for the Bucks. Um, so you have to just, you know, say, okay, you know, that one obviously, maybe, maybe, maybe that one goes your way, given that Middleton had gotten booted, um, you know, the, the previous quarter. Um, but that that obviously could have been disastrous. Uh, but thankfully, you know, would it would have sucked if if Wes's night doing, you know, putting such an effort in on KD was marred by by that one play. So, um, you know, maybe maybe uh, kind of the basketball gods made sure that, that Wes's night was not overshadowed by uh, one moment of, of bad judgment. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and you look at it right uh, on Tuesday. Joel Embiid took six free throws, which he had one game against the Suns earlier this year where he shot fewer than six. Otherwise, that's the fewest free throws he shot all season. KD hadn't attempted a free throw until that foul by Wes um, at the end of overtime. He only took three free throws tonight. 26 points on 21 shots, six turnovers. Did have 11 assists. I thought he, especially early in the game, he was doing a really nice job because the Bucs were showing lots of extra bodies. Um, but I think over the course of the game, you know, they, I think the Bucks just sort of decided like, Hey, you know, if we can just keep KD from going crazy, um, then we'll live with other guys kind of beating us. And again, for a long portion of the game, it looked like those other guys were going to figure out a way to beat you. Brown three of five from three, Seth Curry, four of eight. You expect that from Seth Curry, but not from Bruce Brown so much, although he's been shooting better. Um, Kessler Edwards, two out of three. So yeah, this was just, uh, um, a wild game and, um, you know, like you, you alluded to game seven and definitely shades of game seven. I, you know, the, the one Oh eight 99, when Durant, um, finishes that alley-oop, it feels like, Oh, you know, bucks give it a throw it away again. I think drew made that turnover maybe. Um, and it's like, Oh, the momentum, the dunk, all that. I, the, the thing I thought of was when Durant had that and one, uh, dunk on Pat Connaughton, uh, yeah. in game seven where it just felt like, Oh, and I think, I don't know if it went to like six or seven at that point. I mean, it, it wasn't like super late in the game. It was, I think it was fourth quarter, um, or maybe early in fourth quarter. It was like happened. six and a half minutes left. Cause I watched it recently. And I remember at the time thinking that, well, that's it. Oh. This game's over. I was ready to launch the TV out yeah. the window. Uh, but there was still six and a half minutes left. Yeah. Um, stressful, stressful times. <laughs> By the way, I, I just imagined you wanting to throw the TV out the window a few weeks ago when you re rewatched the game, <laughs> knowing the end. It's like Kane, yeah. come on, you know. I still, I, yeah. I still did, and also the the, <laughs> the 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 James Harden bank three. That was that was oh. that was nearly last straw. I'm oh my god, you. that was a total like put put uh. a freaking bowling ball through, <laughs> through a mirror. Um, but uh, but it felt like obviously curtains when they get that play, and you know. Barclays Center not known for having great crowds, but you know that was obviously a high point for for the Brooklyn faithful, those those that that exist. Um, so, I mean, again, the way that they were able to claw their way back into this game, I mean, you know, again, Drew and Chris were not good for long stretches of <laughs> of Game Seven. Obviously, Chris doesn't even stick around for the end of this one. Um, Drew what? six out of eight. You're insinuating he had like Ella plans or something, Frank. I mean, he didn't really fight. I mean, he didn't really argue the the flagrant no. two, and I, I was surprised it was a flagrant two. Um, but I don't, I don't really, you know, in, in the grand scheme of like sort of like the NBA and what are we kind of incentivizing or punishing? Um, that's not a play I feel that bad about. Like, I, I'm not going to lose much sleep over it. Granted, the Bucks won the game, so I can afford to be, um, you, you know, uh, gracious with the officials on this. Uh, but look. You know, if if somebody does that to Giannis and Giannis, you know, goes down again, it was pretty much as he was just fouling arm. Right. He really didn't. It's not like he got a piece of the ball and followed through and got a piece of him. Um, it's a dangerous play. Right. And I think we all want fewer dangerous plays. So I, I don't mind it. Uh, and, and again, I'm kind of putting on my hat of like as Giannis being a target of a lot of hard fouls, like I'd rather be, you know, stricter with hard fouls rather than <laughs> less strict. Um, so we'll see. Although I, I, I couldn't help but think back to when Trevor Ariza like tackled Giannis on uh, in, in transition uh, from behind last year in the playoffs. And I, I think he got a flagrant on it, but you know, it was like, all right, that, that felt like it was as bad or worse than this one. But, um, but anyway, I was going to say drew <laughs> tough, tough scoring night for drew six out of 18. But 
eight rebounds, four assists, six steals. He did have six turnovers, um, but, you know, again, was just uh, put in a major shift defensively in this game. Kyrie, 25 points, but took 22 shots, three turnovers. Um, you can't ask for a whole lot more uh, as far as just the team and, and Drew's defensive effort on, on Kyrie and obviously switching over to KD at times. Um, you know, he, he worked his ass off and hit that big three that um, I think that was part of that run. He, I think he hit a, you know, again, sort of a pull up three uh, and, and made some free throws in overtime. So, man, um, you know, was not pretty, but again, you have Giannis Adetokounmpo, you've got the ultimate cheat code for games like this. Well, after this game, the one thing I needed was a built bar. I was uh, malnourished. And a shower. Uh, d- d- well, I haven't got to that yet. I'm sitting here in the in the sun right now. I just got the sun beating down on me. I'm just, just an absolute mess. But uh, a built bar will uh, fix me up. There's no doubt about that. The best tasting protein bar that's ever been made. Uh, so many flavors to choose from, by the way. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond. Uh, white chocolate cookies and cream, if you're into that type of thing. That, that sounds like a little dessert built bar, which is good. You can have a dessert. Uh, uh, you can have a built bar for the main course and also the dessert. That's how healthy they are for you. They're covered in 100% chocolate, which may make you think otherwise, but don't be fooled. Uh, they are most certainly good for you. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, 17 grams of protein uh, as well. So uh, better than any other candy bar that you're going to be indulging in and that built bar they're all about the taste they make it taste delicious first then figure out how to make it healthy after that i don't know how they do it but they pull it off every time so go to built.com use the promo code lock 15 and get 15 percent off your order use promo code lock 15 for 15 percent off at built.com uh, so we've got a little quote from Giannis here post game uh and uh nick friedel uh one of my one of my uh one of my favorites over at ESPN. Just so happy to be there. Great voice, booming voice. Uh, and uh, I was actually watching Sports Center before this game, and Friedel was courtside in Brooklyn. And the Sports Center anchor asked him what Brooklyn was going to do to stop Giannis, and he just started cracking up, laughing, and he said, "They're not going to stop him." And that was that was his answer, which I thought was pretty good. But Friedel tweeted Giannis winking. By the way, this is one thing that Giannis still needs to work on. He's winking, not great. Uh, but he said, uh, "This is what Giannis said. Uh, this is about uh, breaking the all-time scoring record." He said, "It's good because I'm changing the narrative. I don't want to be the guy that only dunks and runs. I can also make a three. So uh, shout out to, to Giannis there." Uh, I don't know, a little bit of shade at James Harden there, but I tell you what the good news is. I've just looked it up. The stats, Giannis averaging 30.1 points per game on the season. He's tied with LeBron. I don't know what the fractions are there, but remember LeBron. I, I think he's I think he's like one one hundredth behind. I thought LeBron was at 30.12 or something. So okay. I think he's just, just, just a little bit behind LeBron, but... Um... You know, we'll see. We'll see if LeBron, <laughs> see if LeBron plays. And, well, uh, yeah, I, I guess if you want Giannis to win the scoring title, I guess you're hoping LeBron doesn't come back and play this season and is ineligible. I guess that that's the. Uh, and of okay, course, well, I, I say that through the lens of wanting LeBron to go through extensive rehab, get his body right, and come back for next season. Of course, uh, there's nothing untoward there in in what I would be looking for. Um, you know, one other thing, one other little thing that, that is interesting from this game, and you actually messaged me and asked about Grayson Allen being on the floor late. Uh, one of the other guys that I thought was interesting that played some some really important minutes was Bobby Portis. Yep. And just just to just to compare to the series last year where when things got tight, Bobby Portis wasn't even on the floor. He was picking up DMPs, and you fast forward to where we are now, and Bud is like, all right, Bobby, you're out there. He had a really important bucket as well, a little push shot. Uh, that was helpful in overtime. But I think it comes back to your point earlier about the Bucks practicing this, this scrambling defense a little bit and doing different things. You don't feel like if you put Bobby Portis out there in an important moment, you need to say, okay, Bobby, you're playing drop coverage. This is what we're doing here. You can do different things. He's kind of familiar with it. But I thought that was noteworthy, again, just comparing to to Game 7 or late in, in that series. Yeah, I was, I was really happy. I, again, like if you ask me who should be on the floor – of you know late in the game and in overtime <laughs> against the Brooklyn Nets, should it be Grayson Allen and Bobby Portis as part of that closing group? And obviously yeah. Chris being out changed the dynamics a bit. Um, wouldn't have been my necessarily my first two picks. Uh, you know Pat Connaughton was you know had 11 points and played well, especially early in the game. Um, 
you know, Brooke Lopez only played 21 minutes. We know how important he was in especially game seven last year, but throughout that whole Brooklyn series. Um, and, you know, especially with Andre Drummond, I mean, it's not like the Nets went to like some tiny lineup with Duran at center or something like that for the entirety of the fourth quarter or something like that. I mean, you, you could have played Brooke Lopez more if you really wanted to. Um, so I thought it was a, I thought it was an interesting vote of confidence. Bobby only played, I think, 13 minutes. We know he's been struggling. I mean, this yeah. uh, they mentioned it on the broadcast that he's been struggling since he went to the bench. I mean, he was struggling before he went to the bench, too. Um, it's been a, a bit of a rough few weeks for Bobby as far as, you know, the three-point shot and then just in general, just kind of getting a rhythm. And obviously, you know, having to just change your role doesn't make it easier. And Tuesday, he only plays like 13 minutes. Aside from Embiid, the Sixers went very small. And obviously, Bud felt like going smaller was the best route to take. And I think he was vindicated in that regard. Um, so I thought it was cool to see Bobby on the floor, especially against a team that, again, he was basically glued to the bench against in the playoffs last year. So for him to be out there and, you know, the fact that you were able to play at Grayson Allen and Bobby Portis, two guys that we've been mm -hmm. thinking, uh, can you play those guys because they're defense in key situations? Well, you put them out there against Kyrie and KD and again, they really weren't able to exploit those guys consistently. And I think it's because, again, at times there were, you know, we saw a few instances where switches or Bobby had to hedge or whatever. Um, I just thought the way that they were able to kind of gang tackle those guys and show bodies and then recover and scramble back. Um, again, they gave up some threes and some role players had opportunities. But over the course of the game, obviously, um, it started to kind of work its way back a little, a little bit in the Bucks' favor. You know, at one point it was 57 to 30 to 27 percent in the fourth quarter when I was tweeting about you can't win games when you're outshot by 30 percent and you know turn it over 20 times. Well, it, it got back down to 18 percent differential uh, or 20 percent differential. I think 48 percent or so they ended up at. So still an awesome shooting night that you shouldn't really be able to overcome that type of three point differential. And so the fact that they were able to do it obviously speaks to what they did in all the other phases of the game. And, you know, you look at the rebounding, 90% um, defensive rebound rate tonight. And again, you don't think of Brooklyn as a big team, but I mean, they got Andre Drummond. We we know Andre Drummond very well. He only had two offensive rebounds tonight. He's a guy that obviously has, you know, had some monster rebounding games against the Bucks in past years. Um, they played Nick Clacks in 24 minutes. I mean, they had some, some bodies out there to, to go after offensive glass. Um, and I thought the Bucks just did a great job of keeping it clean in that regard. And, you know, you look at the two point percentage, obviously this is the Giannis effect, 58% for the Bucks, 54 paint points, the Nets, 38 paint points, 45% on twos. Um, you know, that, that really helps. And uh, again, uh, the turnovers were not great. 23 two team turnovers. Nets at least had 16 as well of their own, which is a bit more than the Bucks usually force. Um, but between the three-point shooting and um, and the turnovers, it did feel like you were kind of dodging a bull and you had to be really perfect elsewhere. And, you know, free throw line is another big part of it. 28 of 34 for the Bucks, 11 of 16 for the Nets. And I'm sure, you know, conspiracy Kyrie after the game was like, how do, you, wouldn't Kyrie be the one who's like, how did Giannis shoot more free throws than our whole team? Uh, do you watch how <laughs> Giannis plays versus how you guys play? Like that, that's how he, how he shoots more free throws in your whole damn team. Um, and, and by the way, I, when he got, when Giannis got the foul call, um, that set up the winning free throws in lifetime, I, I thought like, oh, like they just swallowed up and blocked him. But then you can see on the replay, like it's, it was clearly a foul. Bloody hell, um, Frank. If you, and, and Bruce Brown, who, by the way, you had a nice night man but your reaction to that foul after you watch the replay multiple occasions if you're going to complain about that foul you'll complain if someone literally gets decapitated on the floor in front of a whole live audience i mean bruce brown you got the you got the flagrant two against chris right so they they took care Come of on, you, bruce. You, know, you you got that and yeah it was it was obviously a foul on Giannis, and thankfully they called it and they didn't you know do the whole well it's the last play and we got to swallow our whistle thing um mm. so kudos to the officials for you know, calling calling the foul that as it happened, and um, man, credit to Giannis, right? I mean, he missed two free throws, basically like a minute earlier. That could have kind of given the Bucks a more comfortable lead, and to go up and just knock a pair down. I mean, it's it's just great to see, and it, it's funny too. I mean, you think about this game, one twenty, one nineteen. 
those are big score lines. But when you think about the pace of this game and the fact that you had the extra five minutes of overtime, this was a defensive game. When you look at yeah. the, the offensive ratings, 105 for the Nets, 106 for the Bucks. This is this was one of the Bucks' best defensive efforts. Um, you know, in a while, you put it up there with like that Chicago game. That was a little bit better, but again, the relative firepower on hand and the three point shooting, right? Like the fact that you were able to to hold the Nets to a 105 offensive rating while they shot that well and they got that amount of help from the role players. Um, that's really impressive. And and again, you just hope that that's a sign that the Bucks can, you know, play at a heightened level defensively uh, when when games start to, to really count in the playoffs. Um, but that's the funny part about these two teams, right? You think of these two teams, you think of the Nets, oh, they don't play defense. You know, you think this it'd be more of a shootout. And that was the one series last year that was not a shootout. The Bucks had an offensive rating of 117 against the Nets, or sorry, against the Heat, against the Hawks, and against the Suns. The Suns were an awesome defense. The Heat were a great regular season defense. They had a 105 offensive rating against the Nets. So just something about these teams for all the firepower they have on the floor. Um, we've just seen, you know, a lot of defensive slugfests, which you know, again, speaks, I think, in part to just the effort level that these teams are giving out there. And obviously tonight from the Buck side, a bit to the sloppiness and the three-point shooting problems. But, um, but uh, hey, uh, whatever it takes, we'll, we'll take it. No, this was, this was a fun week of Bucks basketball. I was fired up uh, watching these games. And, uh, and Frank, I know you would have seen this. I, I went through the painful experience uh, yesterday, I've getting my passport renewed, so I'm just preparing myself. I'm preparing myself for what's to come. And uh, today's basketball got me a little excited. That was almost enough for me to uh, to to get online and book a flight. But we'll see. We'll see in in, in a few weeks' time uh, what happens. But I'm looking at the standings here, and uh, it's interesting at the top. It's very interesting at the bottom as well in the East. The, the, the Nets aren't going to get out of the play in. I know there was some thought maybe they get really rolling here. Uh, they're not going to be able to do that at this point, but they're in the eight seed right now, but they're tied with Charlotte and tied with Atlanta record wise with a couple of games to go. Uh, it's going to be really fascinating to see how this plays out. And they do play the Atlanta Hawks tomorrow, I believe, or in their next game is against the Atlanta Hawks and they've won five games in a row. So you know, it's not completely out of the question that Brooklyn could slide to the 9 or 10, uh, but we'll see what happens here. And as far as the Bucks go, uh, whatever. I think they're going to keep winning. Uh, they do have the Clippers tomorrow. Now, they also went to overtime, as you pointed out to me, and I saw DeMar DeRozan could have finished it early, but he wanted to help the Bucks out and make sure the Clippers were had maximum fatigue on their legs, so he missed the clutch free throw. The game went to overtime. Uh, the Bulls ended up winning that game, but... Uh, what do you think they're going to do here? Is there any, the, this is a, a, a big game that they played on the road, big minutes. A few players maybe sit this one out. Overall, you still have to be looking at preservation mode. Yeah, I, I would be. I mean, and Giannis saw, was, uh, sort of looked like he had a sore wrist, a sore back, a sore knee uh, in this game tonight. And Drew Holiday turned his left ankle yeah. that I think he's missed. Uh, theory, supposedly, you know, that was the reason that it was given for him missing that game previously uh, a week ago as well. So yeah, unfortunately for people who picked, who bought tickets to this game, yeah. I mean, I would have, I would have said at the start of this week, like be very careful with your expectations for this Thursday game. I'm sure some people were looking at it with an eye on Giannis breaking the scoring record in that game. But I mean, ugh, like the way that we know they want to preserve these guys and the way Giannis has been a bit dinged up now drew tonight plays 43 minutes. He turns the ankle. I guess Chris will be a little, a little more fresh. So I guess Chris would draw the short straw. Like, okay, Chris, you got to get out there and try to play this game. Um, but I, I would, I would be somewhat surprised if Giannis plays um, in this game Friday night against the Clippers. And remember, the Clippers just got put back Paul George. But Paul George, you know, I mean, it, were they going to play Paul George on a back to back? He played tonight. Were they going to play him in a back to back coming off of his injury? Uh, you know, that would have been an obvious game to potentially rest Paul George as well. I mean, again, it's an elbow injury that he's coming back from. So, you know, like maybe that's a little different, your calculus. Um, but uh, but we'll see. I mean, after these two games, like, again, you look at the standings. I mean, I'm in full, like, F it. Go win the East. <laughs> you know, get Giannis the MVP. If Brooklyn finishes eighth rather than seventh, deal with it right like uh, 
F it, let it ride. Um, but I, I think, you know, we've seen it over the past 10 days. Bucks are still going to rest guys if they feel like um, it's important that, that they do that and, and kind of mind their body. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, feels like Drew and, and Giannis in particular could be DMPs on Friday night, which sucks for, for the fans who were hoping to see a record be broken. But at this stage of the year, you know, expecting guys to play on the second night of a back-to-back with, with the way that, you know, they've been nursing injuries, I think is uh, you're kind of playing with fire a bit. So, um, but we'll see. I mean, Hey, if Giannis wants to suit up and, you know, give the Clippers 40 tomorrow night, I'm here for it. I'm here for it, Kane. Um, I, I always, you know, I will not take a single Giannis game for granted. Um, but, uh, but we'll have to see. And, you know, again, a, a tough game on Sunday coming up against the Mavericks as well, which, uh, you know, the, you take these last two games, like, you know, I think if you had said we were going to see the Bucks take two out of three from this road trip in Memphis, Philly, and Brooklyn, I think you would have said, take that all day. And I think just given some of the rest and injury stuff, you split the next two, even though they're both at home. I, I think I'd actually be okay with that, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should just be greedy though, Kane. Maybe we should just be yeah, greedy and just expect the Bucks to win every game, you know? Of course. That's what I do. And the, uh, the great Marcus Johnson tweeted tonight, if you listen to the broadcast, he sort of looked at this 15 game stretch that, you know, we discussed, everyone discussed and said, man, this is going to be pretty brutal. Uh, he was saying, you know, maybe they go eight and seven. I actually heard him on the, the low post and he said, I had some fears. Maybe they'll go three and 12, four and 11. And the Bucks have been shaky this season. We know that they ended up going 12 and three in those games. So we, what we do know is Giannis is going to win defensive player of the year, MVP, scoring title and most improved player. So for Frank and myself, have a lovely weekend. We'll catch you guys next week.